this maintenance film on rebuilt tires is primarily for you, the plane captain, you, the troubleshooter, and you, the tire specialist in AIMD, the pilot exercises the most control over how the tires and wheel assemblies are used. And thus, this film is also for you, the pilot. Part A of this film series on rebuilt tires familiarized you with the high standards required in tire construction and rebuilding. These high standards are also mandatory in tire maintenance. And there is one very important additional item, safety. A high-speed, high-performance aircraft tire may be inflated to approximately 500 PSI and must be handled as live ordnance. This example shows what could happen when safety precautions are ignored. These two manuals are your main references on tire maintenance. This film will help reinforce your knowledge of these manuals. Before we get into tire inspection, let's quickly review the construction of an aircraft tire. It consists of a tread, a shoulder, a sidewall, an undertread reinforcement, an undertread, carcass plies, bead bundles, and an inner liner. At proper inflation, the tire deflects about 30%. Internal heat is caused by deflection of the tire carcass, a continuous flexing action of the carcass and tread as the tire rotates. An underinflated tire has a greater amount of deflection, thereby increasing the carcass flexing, which builds up heat much faster. A hard landing, high taxi speed, and long taxi distances can more than triple the normal tire heat. Carcass plies around the bead bundles can weaken and fail. You, the pilot, can help keep the heat near normal. Under inflation will also cause the tire to wear unevenly at the outer edges of the tread. On the other hand, overinflation reduces the tread contact area, causing center wear and increases the possibility of cord damage on impact with foreign objects and arresting cables. In brief, uneven wear, no matter what the reason, causes premature loss of the tire. As the plane captain, it is your responsibility to assure proper inflation on daily inspections. Check pressure when the tires are at ambient temperature. Remember, the required pressure will vary for land-based aircraft in accordance with gross weight. Carrier-based aircraft operate at fixed pressures. When checking the pressure, inspect the condition and position of the valve stem. If you suspect a leaky valve, tighten and check the valve core. If a tire shows a repeated loss exceeding 5% of the correct operating pressure, it must be replaced. When inflating a tire, use only approved nitrogen servicing equipment, which has been calibrated within the last 30 days. Be sure you have been properly checked out in its use. Remember, never exceed 600 PSI on the regulator. Use the correct adapter fitting, which is not worn or damaged. Connect the hose and stand back the full length of the hose in a fore or aft position, never in line with the axle. Check pressure frequently during inflation. An overinflated tire is as dangerous as a live bomb.
The valve cap must be used to keep foreign matter out. Be sure the cap screws on easily and tightly. Next to underinflation, foreign object damage is the biggest single killer of aircraft tires. If you see a cut caused by FOD, use a tread depth gauge to check the cut. The cut limit for every tire is listed in the technical manual NAVAIR 04-10-506. Measure the remaining tread depth. Measure the depth of the cut. Subtract the remaining tread depth from the depth of the cut. If the difference is more than the cut limit, replace the tire. Look for FOD embedded in the tire tread. In addition to damage on the tire, you will be looking for signs of wear requiring a tire change. Here are some examples. A skid spot caused by too rapid brake application. Tread wear. Weather checking. Uneven tread wear due to improper camber or toe-in. And tread separation. Another major cause of tire damage is external heat, which comes mainly from the transfer of brake heat and brake drag to the tire bead. Excessive braking, for whatever reason, will generate tremendous heat in seconds. Brake application at a ground speed of 150 knots, bringing the aircraft to a stop in 1,000 feet of runway, causes tremendous energy, which is absorbed by the brakes and could heat the brakes to a cherry red within a short period of time. Some aircraft wheels are equipped with thermal fuse plugs. These are designed to melt at a temperature below the danger level to relieve the air pressure and prevent explosive wheel failure. If your aircraft has excessively hot brakes, your pilot knows he will be directed to taxi into the hot brake area away from other aircraft, personnel, and the fuel pits. As the pilot, you will know to leave the aircraft as soon as you have shut it down. And as the plane captain, you will keep other personnel away until at least 30 minutes after the incident. In the event that the brake heat generated has been sufficient to melt the wheel fuse plugs, the wheel tire assembly will have to be replaced. The detailed procedure for removing an aircraft wheel tire assembly will be found in the applicable NAVAIR 01 manual for that aircraft. Observe this procedure closely. You may be called upon to change them alone in time. In the case of the F4, Remove the chalk, open the jack pad door, position the jack, pull the jack pad out, and jack up the wheel and tire. Let the air out by removing the core with a core remover. After all the air is out, remove the two bolts which hold the lug nut on. Next, use a wrench to unscrew the lug.
pull the wheel assembly off the axle. Install the deflated tire flag in the valve stem. Otherwise, AIMD will not accept the assembly for the actual tire change. The RFI wheel comes with greased bearings, ready for installation. Tighten the lug nut all the way. Back it off so that both lug retaining bolts are pointing down. After you have installed the RFI wheel, inflate the tire in accordance with the procedures already outlined in this film. If you have occasion to replace a tire in a dual installation, you must assure that both tires are compatible as required by the 04 manual to prevent overloading of an individual tire. Tire changing aboard ship is more complicated. You must comply with the ship's regulations. The aircraft must be tied down with chains as demonstrated here. Tires are never changed when the ship is in a turn. After you have completed the change, the collateral duty inspector must approve your work. The tire assemblies you have just removed from the aircraft will find their way to the tire shop at AIMD by the next morning. At the end of the workday, providing the wheel passes inspection, the wheel will have a new or rebuilt tire and the assembly will be ready for issue. There is always one supervisor on the shop floor. He ensures that safety procedures are in effect and that there is a consistency in following shop work procedures. The aircraft tire and wheel are a complicated assembly of parts and must be treated with great care. Careless inspection and handling can be very dangerous. The wheel assembly is placed on the bead breaking machine. The valve flag, which indicates the tire has been deflated, is removed. Gloves are worn because of the possibility of wild bead wires and wires in the tread. The assembly is then clamped into place. The breakers are forced against the sidewall with hydraulic pressure while the tire is turning, breaking the bead seal. The wheel assembly then goes to the disassembly area where it is broken down.
The wheel halves are kept together, put on a cart, and taken to the cleaning room. The bearings taken out of the wheel before bead breaking are cleaned in this machine. They are inspected and greased. The bearings are then wrapped in barrier paper and labeled. Since the Navy considers all aircraft tires potentially rebuildable, only tires with obvious defects are rejected. Here are some defects which are cause for rejection. Blowouts. Cord body fabric damage visible to the naked eye. Hot brake damage. Tread separation. Bulges exceeding one inch. And rubber deterioration. The rejected tires are coded H for condemnation and sent to the supply department for disposal. All other tires are coded F and sent to the supply department as eligible for rebuilding. Prior to rebuilding the wheel assembly, the wheel is cleaned with soap and hot water. Safety precautions are enforced and only authorized personnel do the cleaning. After cleaning, the wheel brake keys are inspected, heat shields are checked, and bearing races are checked for scoring. There are further checks of paint condition, corrosion, nicks, or dents, or any other obvious damage. Some wheels are eddy current inspected. After the wheel halves have passed inspection, they are assembled with a new or rebuilt tire using either new bolts and nuts or used bolts and nuts which have been magnafluxed. Then the assemblies go back to the disassembly area where the bolts are tightened lightly and then torqued. Next, the tire is inflated in the inflation cage to the operating pressure and held there for about 10 minutes. If the pressure holds, the tire is deflated back to storage pressure, which is 100 pounds or one half the operating pressure, whichever is less. After removal from the cage, the assembly is inspected by the quality assurance man. RFI tags are put on if the assembly is approved. The wheel assembly with its bearings is placed on the shelf for ready issue. This second film in the series on high-speed, high-performance tires has dealt with aircraft tire maintenance, primarily for you, the plane captain, you, the troubleshooter, you, the AIMD tire specialist, and you, the pilot. The film has stressed safety for an inflated tire must be handled as live ordnance. This film, used in conjunction with your manuals, should help you and the Navy to get the most out of your aircraft tires.